Tonight, the Brits living in the European Union. I think we're being used as bargaining chips. And I don't really understand why that should even be necessary. Those fearing the future. It's not that we feel abandoned, we've been abandoned, because no one's prepared to stand up for us. Others who hope it'll be all right. As long as I can sit here, play the brass band, and watch Manchester United, my life will not change. And how far would you go to stay in the sun? If you pass the tests, you can become a Spanish citizen. Trouble is, you've got to give up your British passport. Would you do that? Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. Over a million Britons live and work in the EU and many of them are fearful of what Brexit might mean for them. Since the referendum vote, they've seen pensions paid in sterling drop in value and they're worried about affordable health care. So is the sunshine turning sour for the Brexpat Brits? sunshine. It's such stuff as dreams are made on. Officially, over 300,000 Brits have set up home here. About one third of them are retirees. But since last year's referendum vote to leave Europe, Brexit is pretty much the only talk in town. In the hills above the Costa Blanca, a British-owned restaurant plays host to a 75th birthday party. But you could be forgiven for thinking you're back in Blighty. For over a decade, Just Brass has been performing some very British-style music from its base in southern Spain. In their time, these musicians have graced many of the UK's top brass bands. Now they've chosen to live, work and play in a warmer climate. We're family. We're family. It family. It it's a big family. We all help one another, we stick by one another. I feel that Spain now and the band as it is now and the lifestyle is England 40 years ago. When you didn't have to lock your doors, when you, you, could, you, you could ask for a favour. If you forgot your wallet and, oh, bring it tomorrow. That doesn't happen in England anymore. But I wanted to know whether things have changed for them since last year's referendum vote for Brexit. Since then, those in the band who are pensioners say they've seen a reduction of roughly 15% in their incomes due to the fall in the value of sterling. Well, you have to tighten your belt a little bit and you, you don't go out as much as you perhaps you used to do. Think twice before you buy things or do things or go back to the UK. You think, can we really afford this now? But there's another issue for expat pensioners. At the moment, their payments are tied to inflation. But elsewhere in the world, Brits have seen their pensions shrink in real terms because they're not tied. Campaigners fear that the Brexit negotiations will mean their pensions will lose that protection. If you decide to move to Australia or Canada, you move there in the knowledge that your pension is going to be frozen and you use that as part of your decision-making process. But people who chose to move to Spain did so in the knowledge that their pension was going to be protected in the future. So we made those decisions based on those assumptions. But the British government says it's yet to be determined whether increasing pensions in line with inflation for those living in the EU will continue after Brexit. And we're beginning to see signs that some EU countries may want to play hardball with the UK over Brexit. The people of Gibraltar voted overwhelmingly to remain in the EU. But now they're leaving along with us. And it appears to have reopened a 300-year-old wound with Spain. For those expats still working in mainland Spain, there remains a mix of worry and some hope that things will be OK. It's like living your life on hold. We didn't plan anything. We were going to buy a house, but we put that off. 
Um, you don't know whether to splash out on a new car, to go on holiday, to buy furniture for your house. We just didn't spend anything in case we have to move. <laughs> What about you, Ian? What are your fears or hopes for the next couple of years and, and what will happen? I don't think it'll make any difference whatsoever. I've lived in a little Spanish village where food and drink hasn't gone up in the 16 years I've lived in that village. It's still the same price. 50 cents for a glass of wine where I paid £7 back in England for a glass of wine. As long as I can sit here, play in a brass band and watch Manchester United, my life will not change. And There's just... always a downside to that, isn't there? <laughs> Manchester United. I think if I was a pensioner, I would be more worried. But because we are paying into the Spanish system, the social security system, we'll have the health care, we'll have the schools, we'll have the pension. So I think our future's secure. <laughs> Karen and her pensioner husband William met and married in Spain 11 years ago. They've made their home in a village near Torre Vieja, which has roughly a 50% Spanish and 50% international population. The couple look after four dogs and two cats, all rescued animals. And they care for Karen's elderly mother, who has Parkinson's disease. Their only income is William's pension but they also receive both carers and disability living allowances from the UK government to help with the cost of caring for mum. The UK government will not make a commitment to the British people who live in the EU. And, and that's the bottom line. There are those people who would say, well, you've chosen to live abroad, you shouldn't be getting any benefits through the British system. What would you say to that? The money that I have put into the, the system, it's my money, not the UK government's money. It's my money. And so I'm entitled to have the benefits from that. The three of us, we've all done that. My mother was 14 when she started work. She's never claimed any benefit and now she needs some support. And uh, that's the way it should be. She's paid her dues and she deserves that support. If she went back to the UK, she would have to go into a home, and that would cost an extraordinary amount to the UK compared to what, what it cost them here. But while the British government hammers out a deal with the EU, many in Spain feel stuck between a rock and a hard place. Those wanting to return to Britain may struggle to sell their Spanish homes at a good price and some would be unable to afford to buy a property back in the UK. Karen and William say expats like them have been given no meaningful reassurances about their future. We're at the bottom of the barrel in getting any support from the UK at the moment. We are really at the bottom of the barrel. And I think certainly anyone that we speak to feels exactly the same. So it's not that we feel abandoned, we've been abandoned. We've been abandoned already because no one's prepared to stand up for us. Academic Brendan Birchall heads up a research project looking into the information available to expats in Europe. While he hopes things will become clearer in the coming months, he's concerned by the current attitude of the UK government. When I talk to people in other countries about these things, a response I often get is, we're nice people, of course we're not going to throw people out or withdraw their rights. Uh, we've got on well, we've had good relationships with the UK for many decades now. I wish there was a little bit more of that sort of thinking coming from the UK, that of course we're going to make sure that people can continue to live their lives in a, in a decent way in the way that they plan to. But most expats told us their biggest worry for the future was affordable health care. Currently, any British citizen living in the EU has the lion's share of their medical costs paid for by the British government. This adds up to an NHS bill in the region of £670 million each year. In return, the NHS bills back EU countries for the treatment of their citizens in Britain. It's known as the reciprocal health arrangement. And for Karen and William, it's the potential loss of that deal which is so worrying. Well, your meds are about 2,000, mums are 3,000. Yes. And the actual payment of being looked after under the Spanish system, um, the whole total is about 10,000 euros a year. 
that's what we get free. And if that were to go, would you be able to find the 10,000 euros yourselves? Things would have to change. Oh, big, big time, yeah. Things would have to change. Everyone's yeah, worried yeah, about yeah. that. Everyone yes. is worried about their health care. And if the worst came to the worst and health care did change completely, would that mean you would be able to stay in Spain? Well, we can't go back. We, we have nothing to go back to. We obviously love our, our dogs and our cats, so we wouldn't leave them. I mean, we, we just wouldn't leave them. Where would we go? What would we do? And I never... I never thought that I would be in this position in my life. I, I just... I just could never envisage that. And it's a scary place to be. It's a very scary place. Very. The NHS pays a smaller amount to cover the health costs of people who have moved abroad than they do if they are in the UK. So if those people were forced to repatriate, it would cost the NHS more than it costs them currently. The other factor is, if they are having their health care paid for, it is because they have paid into the system in the UK long enough that they are entitled to a pension and they are entitled to free health care. For the time being, most expats seem to be staying put. So, if a deal on the reciprocal health agreement after Brexit isn't done, might paying for private health care be an affordable option? The cheapest I found was €480 Euros a month and the dearest was 26000 a year. So that's what we're looking at if we lose the health care that we get now. And would that be prohibitive for you? It would be catastrophic, to be honest, because I don't know what we would do. We couldn't afford to pay it. We can't afford to go back to the UK. There's a bit of a black cloud hanging There's a black here. cloud until we know what is happening and agreements are in place regarding health. If it was to be the worst case scenario for you, what would your options be? So the only option would be is for either both of us or my wife to go back to the UK and use the benefits of the health service in the UK. And, and that prospect, how would you feel about that? Well, it's devastated. We have nothing in the UK. We've no property in the UK. We sold everything to come and live in Spain 14 years ago. And we thought this was it until the inevitable happens and the funeral plan kicks in. Until that time, we were very happy here. But now that Britain has decided to take this step, we just don't know. It's estimated that over 70% of expats voted for Britain to remain in the EU. So some campaigners say that if Brexit negotiations go badly, tens of thousands of them could return to the UK. There are some people who are going to end up in a situation where they feel they're forced to come back to the UK and yet realistically there's nothing back in the UK for them. It's going to be a big burden for the country as a whole, for our welfare budgets, if suddenly we're having to take on a lot of people who are in quite dire financial situations. The Government Department for Exiting the EU has said it wants to guarantee the rights of Britons living in other member states as early as it can, because it's the right and fair thing to do. It denies that the government has abandoned UK nationals or that it is not acting in their best interests. A few hundred kilometres down the Spanish coast in Puerto Banús, the general feeling is one of a more wealthy expat Brit community. Biker and restaurant owner Mark Connor is well settled here, and he believes the Spanish government understands the value of British expats to the local economy. Mark! Hi! Hi. We've got this place that we're sitting in. We've just bought the unit next door, which is going to be turned into a live music menu uh, with a motorcycle theme, because that's my passion. But yeah, we're very busy, we're doing lots and lots of different things. I've been here for 10 years. We pay our taxes, we pay our social security, we employ people. We're keeping a part of the economy here in Spain going. If you take out all of that, I don't care who you are, it's not good for the country. We're a positive thing. So how are you feeling then about 
what may or may not happen in the Brexit negotiations? Brexit was not about the expats. Brexit was about the United Kingdom leaving the EU and what's best for the UK and the people that live in the UK. It's not for me, it's for my family back home and whatever happens, I want what's best for my family back home. And if it means using me as a bargaining tool to get a better deal for those back home and secondarily for people here in Spain, fine, I don't have a problem with that. But since the Brexit vote, thousands of Britons have applied to be nationals of other EU states, potentially to help guarantee their rights and allow them to work freely in Europe. Sweden, Denmark and Ireland are currently the most popular options. So would Mark consider taking Spanish nationality? In Spain, if you want to become a Spanish citizen, you can. After 10 years, you take the tests. If you pass the tests, you can become a Spanish citizen. Trouble is, you've got to give up your British passport and your British citizenship to do that. I don't know of any expats who are prepared to do that. Would you do that? No. Why? Um, you live here, you love I it. I live here, got a I love it. I know, I know it goes against probably what I've been saying up till now. I have an inbred patriotism for my home country which I cannot put aside. And I don't see why I should have to. If the question came up down the line where it said, you have to become a Spanish citizen or you have to leave, I would leave. I would go home. But as the Brexit negotiations rumble on, are some EU countries already making life harder for some expat Brits? France is home to an estimated 180,000 Britons. And Alison Feely is one of that number. I look for bargains wherever I can. I never overspend on anything. And to be fair, I'm not happy unless I get a bargain anyway. Merci beaucoup. But we've scrimped and we've saved to make the best of what we can with the limited budget that we have. When her husband Nick was made redundant back in 2008 during the credit crunch, the family decided to build a new life for themselves in the foothills of the Pyrenees. Can you remember that, those horrible cupboards? Everything was just full of woodworm. They found a farmhouse in need of extensive renovation and set about converting it into a B&B &B and cottage rental business. There was a layer of dust on everything, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. We are 100% committed to making a go of life here and we've invested everything to make our life as we want it to be and, and we'd hope that we won't be struggling too much but there are occasions when really you begin to wonder where the next penny is coming from. Alison says she and the family have integrated well into the village community and are contributing strongly to the local economy. We send an awful lot of our guests to eat at the restaurants in the village and promote tourism for the region wherever we can and do what we can to promote the area to make it prosperous for everybody. Since the vote to leave Europe was announced last June, Alison feels the family has been on a roller coaster ride of emotions. There's always this constant knot in the stomach because we don't know what's going to happen and where it's going to lead and where we will be in 18 months or two years' time. It just makes the life here that we have more stressful and there's this deep-seated worry of the unknown. In order to get some security into their lives, ideally, the family say, they'd apply for dual nationality, which is possible in France. That would give them the same rights as French citizens, but also allow them to easily travel back to the UK post-Brexit. And so last year, as an interim measure, they applied to the French authority for a 10-year residency permit. But instead, they've been given just a one-year temporary permit to stay. There's no security there with a one-year card. It just leaves us still unsure about where we sit in this whole Brexit process. French bureaucracy has always been difficult to deal with. 
But I wonder whether there is anything slightly more sinister going on. Because the law hasn't changed yet. Nothing has changed. I think we're being used as bargaining chips. And it leaves thousands of people that are expats, whether it's in France or other European countries, even including the UK, unsure of where their future lies. The French Interior Ministry told us that for the time being, residency rules for Britons had not changed and that the Feelys one-year residency permit was a matter for the local authorities. We want to continue living here. The life we've chosen um, with the lifestyle we have is how we want to continue. We don't want to have to change that setup in any way, shape or form. And to have the rug pulled from underneath us after seven to ten years of being here feels totally unfair. It's not right. It's not just. Tonight has heard from a number of expats struggling with access to residency permits and even having problems with opening bank accounts at the moment in the EU. I'm hearing lots of stories of people going to get regular everyday services and now they're being told that because Britain isn't a member of the EU anymore they're not entitled to that, which is incorrect, but it just shows how much confusion there is around. The optimist in me says that their rights are going to be maintained, but they can't be sure of that, so until that is clarified, a lot of them are going to be sick with worry. Meanwhile, back in Spain, dual nationality is not an option, and that's left some thinking of becoming Spanish citizens. If push comes to shove, then yes, I could become a Spanish. And that's uh, something, something I definitely have to consider. Would that matter to you? Do you feel strongly British even though you're <laughs> still here? Or is no. It... no, I don't think it matters. I'm a child of the world, and so that's what I do. My daughter is, at the moment, going the other way. I mean, she's been brought up here in Spain. She's now studying in, in the UK and, and has taken out British nationality. So... But for all of them, their preference would be to remain British and to keep all the rights they've grown used to as European citizens. And as far as nationality goes, Sandra, are you still wedded to being British? British Do you yes. feel British? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm an army child and I lived all, all over the world from being, well, I was born in Germany. And I think Britain's wonderful, you know, and, but I can live with anybody and I can live anywhere. If you could talk to the negotiators, who are going to be going to and fro over the next months, years, what would you say to them? Well, I would just say, don't if it's not broke, don't... If it's don't not, fix it. Don't fix it. If it's not broke, just leave everything as it is. Everybody lives here loves it. Leave it as it is. It works. And if you were to get the message that, yes, they've agreed that things can stay as they are, what would that mean for you and your family? It would be relief. We could move forward, we can make plans. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. It would just be a weight off his shoulders. It really would. We could just carry on with our lives in the manner that we came out to Spain to live in. Following a number of calls and emails to the French authorities from the Tonight team, the Feely family's been told they will now be given 10-year residency permits. Now, if you'd like more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com slash tonight. Until next time, good evening and thanks for watching. Next week, with 250 million cold calls made each year targeting your retirement funds, tonight reporter Adam Shaw asks, how safe is your pension? This is what somebody is expecting to live on for the rest of their life, and you're taking that away from them. You're stealing their future. We're back in the Dales next, where the police are called to Emmerdale. Then after that, new at 8.30, Joanna Lumley's postcards explores some of the incredible scenery and history that Greece has to offer. And then at nine, it's the last in this series as we join the detectives inside the major crimes team.